file, go down to Open Scene, and let's open up Mechanics5.mb. All right, so what I have here is some basic geometry that's going to give us a Pong-like setup for the Pong video game. So we're going to just going to animate the ball going back and forth, and the paddles moving and um, hitting the ball going back and forth. Now, in order to simulate the actual game, it's going to be easier for us to animate the ball first and then the paddles second. And we're going to go ahead and do this in sections or layers. Okay, so we're going to animate the ball first, and we're actually just going to animate translate X um, first. So let's see, I'm going to change my range here to 120 frames and I'm going to click on frame 1 right here I'll hit W and I'm going to move the ball to the left hand side so it's just touching the paddle on the left side okay now I'm going to go to translate X right here and I'm going to right click and go to key selected All right. so I'm going to go from frame 1 to frame 30 and I'll move this to the opposite side All right, so my auto keyframe toggle is turned on, which means I don't have to set a keyframe here um, on frame 30. It's going to drop it in for me already. So I'll go from 30 to 60, and then I'll move it back to this side. And I'll go from 60 to 90. I'll move it to the opposite side again. And then I'll go from 90 to 120. And go to this side. Alright, so now if I hit play, I should see the ball just bouncing back and forth between the two paddles. Okay, so why did I just do translate X first? Well, um, what we eventually want is we want the ball to be traveling at different angles, going zigzagging across the screen, and it's much easier to set up the different angles if we already have our translate X in place. It just makes it, we don't have to, f um, if we were to animate both X and Z at the same time as it's going up and traveling at different angles, it's just more, it's more difficult to figure out the timing of the back and forth. Because we want the back and forth between the two paddles, the timing to be about 30 frames per every time that it crosses the screen. So now that we've established the timing, we can layer in the next um, section of animation, which is going to be um, the Translate Z. It's just much easier to set it up this way first. We don't have to worry about the timing anymore. Now we can just worry about where it's bouncing on these walls on the top and bottom. All right, so I'm on frame one here. I'm going to go to frame 30. And rather than it just going straight across, I'm going to move it down to say right here. Um, we're kind of, uh, let's see, at a translate Z value of 5.9. So what I need to do actually is before I do that, I'm going to hit Z to undo. And I need to key translate Z on frame 1. So make sure your time slider is on frame 1. I'll right click and go to key selected. Now I can go to frame 30 and I can move this down okay so if I scrub back you can see it's starting where we want with a translate Z value of 0 and now we're gonna go down okay so now I want the ball to bounce based on the angle it's traveling this diagonal angle I want to come down and bounce right about here alright so all I have to do I don't um, is just scrub until I get to the point where I want it to bounce, which is about at frame 37. Okay, so now I'll just move it down. Okay, it's going to auto key in that keyframe, so now I can see the trajectory here. Okay, so then at 60, I want the ball to kind of land about here. All right. So let's just see here. Doing, yeah. Okay. All right. Now I want the ball to bounce again. 
maybe up right about up here. So I'll just move my slider till it gets to that point. And then I'll move the ball up. And then when it gets to 90, I'm going to bring the ball down. And then of course, when we get to the end of our animation, we want it to start and end at the same position so that our whole animation can loop. So here at 120, I'm going to move it down so that the translate Z value is at zero. Okay. So now I'm going to play the animation. And you can see, because our start and end point is the same, it'll just loop continuously forever. All right. So now that we have the ball bouncing, and we have the completed ball with the correct path, now we can animate these two paddles. So I'm going to go to frame one here, click on the, um, the paddle on the left hand side, and I'm going to right click over here in the channel box and go to key selected on translate Z. I'll do the same thing with the paddle on the right hand side, just key this on frame one. Now the paddle is going to have to move down this um, right hand paddle is going to have to move down here uh, to connect on frame 30. But we don't want it to start moving at the beginning. We want it to appear like this is going to stay here until the player, when he's playing the game, is going to react to the fact that the ball is going down here. Okay, So we want a delayed reaction. We don't want this to start moving from frame 1. We want it to start moving from about frame 25. Okay, So we, that means we want it to stay uh, here at 0, translate Z at 0, from 1 to 25. So we'll just key this again here at 25. And then at 30, we'll move it down. Okay, so this is what this looks like. It's staying stationary, and then at the last moment, it slides down. Okay, all right. So now the um, paddle on the left hand side here, on frame 60, it needs to contact with the ball. So that means we'll go to 55, and we'll just right click and go to key selected set a new keyframe here and then at 60 I'll move this up so you can see here that paddle is also reacting at the last moment to the fact that you gotta see where the ball is going first before you move that paddle alright so let's see we're gonna bounce here and then at 90 this needs to come up so we'll go to maybe 80 because this is traveling a long distance I'll select the paddle on the right hand side I'm going to right click and go to key selected and then at 90 I'll make contact here alright so let's play this you can see the paddles are reacting to the different so everything looks good except for the paddles are snapping, they're, they're jumping to a new position at the end of the animation. Alright, so right here, our last position for the paddle on the right hand side on frame 90 is at translate a Z value of negative 3.714. So why don't we just copy this keyframe right here. Go to copy, and I'll go to frame one, and I'll go to paste. And that way when it loops, the last frame and the first frame are the same. So watch what happens. Okay, so now we have the problem of this is going to slide down to zero. So we need to copy for this, we need to copy frame one and I'll paste it on 25. That way it's going to stay in the same position until the last moment. However, we've got a problem in that it's not reacting the way we want it to. You can see it's jump, it's like going up and then down. That's because we copied and pasted keyframes. 
So I'm going to go to the graph editor. I'm going to select the graph here, the whole thing. And I'm going to choose linear tangents. And that you can see the graph here changes. This is what we want, okay? So now we'll play it and see what happens. Okay. So I think here on 25 we should give us give ourselves a little bit more time for this. Um, so we'll move that keyframe. on 25. So I'm going to select that keyframe, press W for my move tool, then I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to click and drag this and move it to frame 20. Okay. So I'm going to play this now. That looks better. Okay, so then the other thing is we have this piece right here on frame 1 and on frame 60. We forgot. So here uh, we need to get this paddle on the last um, section right here to connect. Alright, so starting at maybe. 115, we'll key this in. Go to key selected. And then at 120, I'm going to move this down. So we'll just type in 0 right here. And now I'll play this again. So now you can see the whole thing loops seamlessly. There's no jumping. Neither of the paddles jump at the end to a different position. So that can just loop continuously uh, forever. Okay, so that's the end of the exercise. Make sure that you save your work and don't forget to send a copy of your Maya file to the Dropbox for credit.